What does it mean to be dominant? I've played at the highest level. I've received the highest award. Thank you. But those things did not make me dominant. On this show, I want to interview people from various backgrounds and careers to see what made them dominant. That's why I decided to partner up with Mission Bueno. Together, we want to promote progress and achievement while sharing real stories of struggle and success. We want to acknowledge the challenges in front of us, but we also want to pivot towards improvement and positivity. Everything is going to work out. We are the dominant ones. We dunk on the world. We don't let the world dunk on us. Most people think I got the name the Human Highlight Film and the pros. I had that name since 11th grade. I got that name by a guy oh. named Howard Garfinkel at Five Star Camp. At the time, it was the greatest high school camp in the country. And I was in an all-star game. I scored 42. They couldn't tell how I was scoring, so they said they wanted to roll the film back and see what I was doing. <laughs> but to make a long story, they said, you know what? We're just going to call them the Human Highlight Film. <laughs> and I hated it. Really? I, I, I'm serious. I hated it. But as I got older, I was like, hold up. I can make some money off this day. you coming over absolutely man. it's an honor you want to sit down and talk about the show that's the dominant ones that we're doing and just yeah. want to talk about your life and your career and how you got started absolutely and i think this is a perfect time and opportunity to kind of see uh what did it for you yeah. how did you get started in yeah. not just rap yeah but christian rapping <laughs> yeah 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 you gotta be one of few in the game that's, that's doing it like that and i think that's a unique feel to be in right yeah now. i mean for me you know it's it, like you said it's unique and i and that wasn't my intention you know mm -hmm. i didn't it wasn't my intention to be labeled as the christian rapper you mm -hmm. know what i mean but uh but really what it was was just seeing you know guys hustling you know uh living in texas where there's a lot of independent music artists and they were selling cds out the trunk of their car mm -hmm. and at the time the music that you know was being birthed out of the this this group of 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 college students that i was around um Nobody was interested in it, you know. It was either too worldly for the church or too Christian for the world. So it was kind of like, man, I just gonna have to. We're gonna take it to the streets. So mm -hmm. we was selling out the trunk of the cars. And I remember one time I took a. I remember going to the store and I took a CD. I gave it to the the store clerk and I said, uh, you know, will y'all buy my CDs? And they said, we'll buy like two of them. So I gave them two. I sent two friends in there. They bought those two CDs. Mm -hmm. I, and I came back to the store. I said, y'all need any more CDs? Y'all need any more? Y'all sell them yet? And they said, yeah, we just, as a matter of fact, we just sold them out. I said, y'all want to buy some more? They said, yeah, we want to buy some more. Give us about 10. I gave them 10 CDs. I went back outside. I sent 10 friends in there to go buy the 10 CDs. And then mm -hmm. just over oh, time, smart. yeah, smart, so, yeah. you know, but it yeah. just became a, a, a pathway that I got blazed. And I really wasn't anticipating or trying to do that. My biggest thing was to be honest in my music about you know who I am and what I believe and um and let the chips fall where they may. Well, that's really unique, you know, cuz you don't hear those type of positive messages coming from where we came up from. Right, right, right. And to have someone to you know to defy kind of all the odds in your field mm -hmm. in that rap game, you know. You might have people look at it funny. You yeah. Know, Christian rap, what is that? Yeah. But it's the same thing you're doing, but I'm just doing it as a positive message to help people find options for themselves absolutely. to make them better people absolutely so, and i i really applaud what you're yeah. doing because it ain't easy yeah no I, I it's not and uh you know but a lot of times too I, i'm sure you 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 felt the same way you also get boxed in you get mm -hmm. boxed in it's like oh well he's he's just an athlete you know mm -hmm. what i mean so mm -hmm. for me it's a lot of times is he's just you know a rapper or he's just a christian rapper and there's so many other things mm -hmm. you know because because we didn't know or have any direction and what to go, and we ended up having to start our own label, which, you know, puts me in the entrepreneurial category. Mm -hmm. And we've been running this label for the last 15 years, and, 
you know, signing different artists and learning the music See, industry. That's what's different right there. You said something very, very telling is that you're looking at it now from an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial perspective. Yeah. Where now, not only you can do your music, you can have other people come to something you created and come to your studio and use your business to grow their business. Absolutely. So, uh, and that's how you build generational wealth. Wealth, is, yeah. It's, it's what you do now. That yeah. It really dictates where you go into in the future. Yeah. That's, that's, and that's the biggest thing. Like, I'm when, even looking at, you know, we were talking about just all the different things that you have going on in, mm -hmm. in your world, you know, and uh, that's that's inspiring to me because mm -hmm. obviously you, you're legendary on, on the court, mm -hmm. but then there's other things you've done outside of that mm -hmm. that, you know, make you more than just an athlete. See, and what we do, you should use it as a launching pad to do something bigger. Right, right, yourself. right, right. And so that's when I look at basketball. Basketball's giving me a platform. It's giving me a launching pad to do other things that otherwise I wouldn't have had the chance to do. Yeah. Which brings me to my next question is, when did you know that you have made it as a rapper, let alone a Christian rapper? When did I know I had made it? But I'm going to be honest with you. This is not going to be the, 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 the typical answer. So I was working a nine to five. I was working in a call center for uh, uh, Comcast Cable. Mm -hmm. And I was working in a call center and then I got an internship in the marketing department and then they gave me a job in the marketing department. So I was working in marketing. I hated it. You know, I, was, I hated every day of it. You know, just the corporate gig wasn't my thing. Um, so on the side, I was working on the album, you know, mm -hmm. making music. And, um, and they said, you know, you either have to transfer to Philadelphia and go to another department or take a severance check. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to move to Philly, so I took the severance check and finished out my album. And in it took, you know, I was three months severance, and in that three month period of time, I finished an album, and I had about the next two months booked for shows. Mm -hmm. So I was able to pay my rent, mm -hmm. pay my cable bill, and pay my gas and cell phone bill. And that felt like, to me, I made it, because mm -hmm. you know I, I was at a place where I could pay my bills by making music. Um, I had no idea that it would go to the lengths and breaths. You know, I didn't know I was going to win Grammys. I didn't know I was going to have a number one album. I didn't know, you know, I was going to uh, be on the radio and any of those particular things. For me, it was being able to do what I love and do it for a living. And that was when I felt like, I, I think I made it. I might have we made it. We do crazy things, Dave. You look back, too, on your career, because I had situations where I look back on the smallest thing that I did to help launch my career. And like you said, it was that severance check that gave you the opportunity. Yeah. To get there for me it was leaving home or having faith to leave home when i was 16. Mm. I, I was on my own and got discovered on the playground mm. the next day and, and, and we all have a lot of similar stories yeah that is a really special special story because you know most people would have taken that seven check and went and did something when, else when it blew it, it. You know, yeah. blew it somewhere, yeah. but you 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 had a bigger mission and i think uh you know that's something you should be very proud of because it's not easy to take everything you have yeah. and put it in one basket. Before you you got the Grammys, album of the year, and then you blew up the way you blew up, what were some of the obstacles that you went through or some of the failures, potential failures? You say, yeah. you know what, this is going to be harder than I thought. Yeah. What was that moment? Oh man, where do we begin? So I will say this, my unique wiring is this. I'm the type of person that really sometimes is oblivious to failure. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I don't know I failed, I've just moved on. It's almost mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, you try to build something and then it didn't, it fell down and you, you just kind of say, oh, that fell down. Ooh, look, we could build this. And you'd almost you almost forgot about that about thing that, that happened. Mm -hmm. And so I think that saved me early on is just that mentality of like, okay, on to the next, on to the next. So I didn't spend a lot of time focusing on the failures. And there was there was plenty of them, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But I didn't spend a lot of time focusing. But I, I think the obstacles early on were, were just people people being afraid mm -hmm. to let me come in the door. With, for me, when, when I talk about failures and fail, I think it's two different things because you can have failures and you can mm -hmm. learn from the failures to be successful, but when you just flat out failed, that means you quit, you stopped. Mm, that's good. That's my definition. That's good. Because even though I had some failures, yeah. I didn't quit. Because yeah, yeah, it yeah. Was, I was going to find a way to get over get it. Get back up. Around it because it was just that obstacle. Yeah. Road. So it, 
everybody look at it differently. Yeah. And I looked at the failures differently because I look at it, it's not a true failure. Mm-hmm. It's just a setback. Yeah. But when you succumb to that, that thought of quitting. Yeah. That's when you've given up. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I mean, I and I, I I definitely haven't been at the place of. I mean, I have been at the place of I wanted to quit, but not early on. Early on, I was just like, you know, I didn't, I never expected. It's kind of like climbing a mountain, mm-hmm. and you, you only expected to take, you know, to get this high, and then you got that high, and you're like, oh, what? I got this high? Well, shoot, I'm gonna take another step, and then you got up, and you're like, what? I got this high? I'm, I'm gonna take another step, right. and it's not an, for me. It wasn't until I got to what felt like the top of the mountain where the mm-hmm. pressure was more intense. So it's, it's kind of like you may have felt like. There was it was fun or it was exciting to be a high school basketball player and score mm-hmm. well and then you got then you got to college and it's like man I'm in college and then it's like oh man I'm going to the NBA but it's when you get to the NBA and now you you're scoring 25 points a game and it's all this pressure and then mm-hmm. then it's kind of like man you know I, I'm feeling it more so now mm-hmm. after you done won the Grammys after you done been on the TV show everyone expects you to perform at your highest capacity right. every time oh, yeah. and that's when it gets tough yeah. you know. You know you look at the work you put in, though. Mm-hmm. You know, you got a, a Grammy. How did it feel to get that first major accolade internationally? You yeah, know, it's not just now. That's international uh, recognition. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. I always envy. <clears throat> I envy people who, who win things and they work so hard to get them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I envy I mean, when I see the Olympics and I see somebody crying. Mm-hmm. Like, man, I worked so hard to get this. Um, I envy them because I don't quite know what that feels like. And when and I say that, I mean this. I was having so much fun doing what I love to do. I looked up and had people celebrating me and and giving me this this acknowledgement called a, a Grammy Award for the work that I had done. And I was like, wow, that's, God has really blessed me because I was just having a great time with people I loved and mm-hmm. you know hanging out with my friends, making music and doing you the stuff for, that we love to do. For nothing and had fun. And now you're getting accolades for it, and you're getting rewarded for it's it. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the that's the that's the. I, I it's different now because you you've gotten there, and you want to see things happen for people, and you want to like you said, I, I'm involved in entrepreneurship now and building other kind of businesses, and mm-hmm. and so now there's more hard work because I want to see a particular result. Mm-hmm. I know this result is mm-hmm. possible. Right. Um, but it's just a little bit different because you know you're doing it for fun, and, and I do think you know I don't know it's it's different maybe than being a professional athlete Mm -hmm. because you know at the beginning of the season that there is a trophy that you can obtain. Mm -hmm. There's a a record that you're aiming for. And for me, I didn't know what the, you know, I didn't know what the limit was. The sky's the limit in that business. Yeah. And you don't, you know, you're doing it because you love to do it. Right. And the accolades is the the bonus of all that hard work. Right, and you know, and, and that's in any form of business that yeah. you've um, you you pushed yourself to or thrive to be something special in your life, or or be a basketball or entertainer or, mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. it may be. And it's a lot of hard work that goes in that, and when you do it at a especially at a very early age, yeah, you know, you're just enjoying it. Yeah, you don't expect all the accolades and the money that comes with it. Right, 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 right. You know, because sometimes I, even today I look back and think, I'm like, wow, man, I did this for free. That's right, how much I loved it. Yeah, you know? having a good time. But the D- money was good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you. The yeah, shirt. yeah. Come on now, dunk on the world. Yeah. Don't let the world dunk on you. When's the last time you dunked? I can touch the rim right now, but that's about it. Let me tie my shoes up. Here we go. Look at that! Look at that! I, I got up there. <laughs> I, I, I give it another Nick, try. Just... Oh. He's supposed to know how to do that. Give me the ball, man. All right, here we go. Oh, there it is, there right. it is. I couldn't go out like no sucker, you feel me? If you had to go back mm. uh, many years, what yeah. would you tell your younger self? Oh my gosh, made it? so many things. Or what would you do differently? It's a lot of things. Um, I can get deep off into the woods with that one on so many different fronts. Mm -hmm. Um, One thing I think, um, you know, I would have, I would have told myself um, that number one, I'm already accepted. You know, it it was tough for a young black man in in a single parent household Mm -hmm. in in a world um, 
you know, that constantly made me feel as if, you know, I don't know if I belong or if I'm accepted to feel accepted, acceptable. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would, I would probably just say, man, listen, and it's hard to affirm yourself in that kind of situation, mm -hmm. but we'll say, man, you're accepted. God knows you. God loves you. Uh, your mama know you, your mama love you. And, and man, just work out of being loved and stop trying to earn everybody's love and admiration. Like be who you were made to be and don't right. worry about what everybody else. Cause right. I think that plagued me just trying to figure right. out what they want from me and what these people want from me and what these people want from me instead of just being fully me. Well, I think what's making you, you special too is that, you know, you're a very unique brother. You know, you've got a great head on your hood. You're smart, brother, very deep. And I'm, I'm noticing that as we talk, yeah. Because I know it's a lot more there, but we'll probably be here all night. Oh, for sure. You know, because I'm the same type of, you know, I yeah. can talk forever. But it, it's just nice to see, you know, what you're doing in, in your field and mm. being able to take that and flip it into something even bigger. Right. You know. So, where do you see yourself moving forward? Yeah. Now that you've kind of attained all these different yeah. accolades and. You've played a lot of different roles in your career. Now, yeah. now, where do you see yourself, or where you want to go? I'm definitely uh, pivoting and um, entering the, uh, the the 2020 draft mm -hmm. for the NBA. Hey, so well, okay, I'm well, just gonna know. pivot. They got a lot of point guards and shooting guards they need out there these days. You know? Yeah, well, you know, we'll figure it out. So that's yeah. my that's my next move. I yeah. felt like if I came over here, I was on the right track. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. no, well, any any you know encouragement I can give you, know, that's what I'm here for. Oh yeah, per perfect. That's what I need. Uh, but but sincerely, I'm really, um, you know, I just learned I, I learned as an artist the business of music, and so then I learned how to do the business of music, and now that I've learned the business of music, I want to learn the business of businesses and just what all mm -hmm. of business looks like in different fields, yeah. you know so what you I mean? Got a, you got a great platform to do that. Now. Yeah. Because, you know, growing up, we would never had these type of avenues to go down or being a demand to do certain things because people are going to always be coming after you to do certain things. And I know you see it now, you know, especially early in your career, mm. and you got so far to go. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so you just got to pick the right people, the right situation, and yeah. you nurture those businesses, those opportunities, and you let the chips fall where they may. If you had to describe dominance, what would that be for you? Oh man, dominance. I, so I look at it like this. I think of like uh, being a track star, and and a track star. You know what? What you think is that they're looking around and trying to beat the people next to them, mm -hmm. but really they're trying to beat their best time mm -hmm. and trying to be the fastest that they've ever been. Mm -hmm. So I think dominance is when you are competing against yourself. Success is not what I do compared to you. Success is what I do compared to what I was made to right. do. Right. So I'm trying to get as far as I can go. I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses. I'm not trying to say, "Oh, what y'all doing? I'm gonna beat y'all. Oh, I want to do what y'all are doing." I'm saying, "What can I do? What where?" where what limits are there for me? And let me go after them and, right. and just dominate in my space and, and the things that I'm excited about and that I'm passionate about. And that's really what dominance is to I me. I tell you, that's one of the best you know, definitions I've heard you know, so far because it puts it all in perspective. You know, mm. It ain't about the next person because I never worried about the guy next to me. Mm. I worried about the guy who was next to him because he was going to ha help him try to stop me mm. you know so i never worry about the initial guy i read i worried about the second guy was double team or the third guy who might be double teaming some of them second guys are uh, crazy yeah, I, yeah, I get so, you right. you wouldn't worry so, about jordan you worry so, about pippen you know, i don't so know you, you had to have a counter to their counter yeah you know oh you always that's had good to be one step ahead and, and the same thing in business same thing in anything you do man so but you know, I really appreciate you coming over. Man. No, the pleasure is mine. I met that you know, very deep young oh, fellow, man. man. I, and, I'm, uh, I'm honored. Wish you the best, man. I appreciate you. Go get you another grant. Hey, <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. But you good know luck what I mean? to you. I appreciate Dominance, that. Dominance, fellas.